I'm on a quest to find the best M3 made by BMW. This is a highly subjective opinion, so I won't be saying which is the best, but rather I'll be comparing different gens between my E90 and asking the owners why they cho chose their specific M3. This is going to be a great series and I look forward to seeing the discussion in the comments. To be honest, I actually really, really wanted a E90 uh, or E92 or E90 chassis. I think they're amazing cars. The S65 is an amazing motor. Uh, but to be honest, this car was much more ideal for me because I always dreamed of having an S2000. Um, and I have a Subaru. I still have that Subaru. So the second car I always wanted to own was the S2K. But now that I'm at the age that I'm at, that I'm at uh, if I got an S2K, it basically would be a very similar build to my Subaru. Uh, like a full race, you know, uh, gutted out track car build. So I wanted to have a more of a refined, classy uh, Euro build. And this is uh, kind of like a GT3 RS, and ironically there's one right there, <laughs> um, build. Uh, and I like that I can still have the uh, raw, visceral feeling that the S2000 uh, has. Um, this car has that too, but it's more refined. The E92, E9M, E90M chassis is very refined compared to this car, I felt. Uh, when I drove my homies, that, homies cars um, and they have that chassis, I felt the weight in the steering whenever I would drive it. Uh, it felt like there was a lot more mass. Um, even though there isn't that huge of a difference between them in, in weight, uh, I could really feel the mass in the parking lots, uh, on the street, uh, even on the track. So I, I liked having this, this more lightweight, direct, raw experience, um, but without all the cons of having the S2000 in that it's you know, really small, uh, unpractical, etc. So to give credit to you know, the, the newer M builds and chassis, I really do think that the E90, E92, G80, F80, M cars are really the better car. Um, they're just a better, faster, newer car. Uh, more practical, uh, more comfortable, uh, newer design. But uh, to me, the E46 M3 is the better M. And it's kind of like the S2000s where I think the AP2 S2000 is the better car, more refined, safer, etc., easier to drive. But the AP1 S2000 is really the better S experience if you want that true S2000 experience. So that's what this is for me. Um, to me, this is like that prime equilibrium between uh, analog and classic M experience and still not crazy old. Uh, and it's a fine equilibrium between that and you know newer modern design experience performance. Uh, and to me, this is just the whole package and really at that sweet spot. It's been a good minute since we shot that last video. I think it's been a year. Um, yep. Yeah, so I've been kind of going uh, mod hungry and I basically uh, did a lot of things around the cars. So in the bay, I did a, the Evolve uh, Carbon CSL airbox. Um, it's a cool design because it actually runs all the way down to, it's the furthest running airbox down to maybe like down here. And it matches the, I, I retain my Eventuri Carbon uh, duct. So this, this duct actually connects to the OEM, there's like a pipe here inside behind the headlight and basically that opening then opens straight into this opening. So it's a really cool design, the most functional I found because normally air boxes will, will open or stop right here and be sucking in you know, all the ambient uh, air here. I made sure I cut this to you know, block as, as much heat as I could. Um, I got the carbon valve cover that uh, is vented to match this, uh, but also just to vent more heat, which is great. Uh, I really, really love the DMG strut brace that I did. Uh, the guy did an amazing job uh, crafting that artwork himself. The welds are the best I've ever seen in my life. Uh, made sure I did the extra burn and clear coat on it, and then I had to do uh, this to match. I think that's, uh, oh yeah, so to do all this though, um, I wish I could just pop it on and that'd be it, but I had to go alpha N, which is deleting the math, uh, and then I run the IAT into with a harness into the OEM math, so it's very clean, I tucked everything around. But uh, with that, I had to get uh, another Pro Tune. I went to uh, Hassan, HGE Performance from Lebanon. And so now, the car is now Pro Tuned on Alpha N, uh, and it's a pretty <laughs> glorious experience. So the car I was saying earlier made a 331, sorry, 333 wheel horsepower and 251 wheel torque. So it's pretty crazy because uh, now I can say that the car makes what it is, uh, the figures, the crank figures to the wheel. And uh, that's pretty cool. It, it uh, definitely helped a lot top end. Made a point with all the carbon that I did to have it run or ensure that it was running the same direction. And I only bought things uh, after I ensured that it was running this direction. So that's the valve cover, the uh, CSL box, 
the lip and even the, you know, I kind of blocked off my fogs with 3M, um, but I made sure that it ran the same direction. And even the duct, the PSD designs, uh, carbon duct. So I tried to keep that consistent through the whole car. Um, and I just wanted everything to look very OEM plus. Um, again, the whole theme and ideology was Porsche GT3 RS-esque. So last time I was on the T's, right? Or was I on the NT03's? You were on the, you were on the T's. Okay, so I still have the T's, um, but I lower the car a lot. Um, I, you know, now when I see the video from last time, I'm pretty unhappy with the car and I think it looks really ugly. But now this is the Fimit that to me is proper, just super tight all around, but no rub. Um, I'm pretty happy about that because I drive the car really hard. Uh, therefore, that's why I've also been going through the car and I replaced all the, I used to have a uh, polyurethane bushings on the car. I still do very, throughout the whole car, but I've been replacing them with uh, the Turner, Turner race monoball bushings. So I have the Turner F cab, the Turner uh, rear, so the front control arm bushing, the rear trailing arm bushing, and the rear control arm bushing, all in the monoball race uh, spherical bushings. So those were actually amazing. They completely transformed the car. I'd highly recommend them. Um, this interior, I've been, I've been doing a lot on the interior. Uh, I think last time I said that I had the Auto Solutions uh, drivetrain or shifter assembly there. So uh, now uh, it still has that bolt action rifle feeling that I love. Um, I did the Recaro Sportster CS. I sent that to AMX Performance. I had them uh, custom uh, stamp this with the M embossment, the tri-color. I had the, the Recaro logo used to be here. I had them stitched up here. so. You know, I can remind myself that, I'm, that I, I put in all that money and effort for a Recaro, so it's visible. Um, I did the Renown uh, wheel because I really wanted a OEM Plus looking wheel that retained a BMW logo uh, with the race stitch that looks like a checkered flag to match the white of the car. Um, everything else still the same interior, uh, same interior roll bar, and I think uh, for the interior, all I want to do next is just. Uh, upgrade the speakers to something better, although they are great already. Uh, and then uh, put in a newer doubled in to just uh, refresh the interior. And maybe when I'm just super bored one day, it would be just to put a, another car in on the passenger side. There's not too much to do on these cars, but uh, I was still trying to uh, make the rear look better. So I did the uh, Varus uh, carbon rear diffuser, which I don't see too often, um, at least authentically. So this is this I waited six eight months for uh, during COVID and that was a pain. Uh, it was uh, kind of a pain to install, but I installed it a little bit different to have it run flusher to the bumper. Uh, this part is more aggressive. I had this run a little bit lower um, to clear my exhaust, uh, which is now with the Alpha N tune that I'm running. It's a little bit more rich. We we made it a little bit safer. So now the car throws fireballs, hence the cracking CSL diffuser. Now I just realized. <laughs> um, then I did the SD plate, which is uh, some great hacks here. Uh, I did the DMG uh, rear bar. So this is an amazing mod. I had to drill through the entire chassis and it goes through to the subframe, triangulates that to the strut tower. Uh, Try to do that as clean as possible and to match the front end. Um, and yeah, it, I would say this is still functional. I was worried that it would cut my uh, usable space in half, but now I realize I can just put groceries behind it or in front of it and it just holds it in place. So that's cool. I thought the Varus diffuser it was kind of weak in that it would just end at 80% of the bumper, you know, stop right here with this fin. So I continued, I remounted the spats that I had before to follow this contour and uh, finish and complete the diffuser from behind. And I think it looks more complete. To be honest, I've been going uh, super mod hard in the past few months to complete the build. Uh, I've done everything that I wanted to do since the last time you shot it. I would say the only few outstanding things would be kind of big things that would just be super splurging. Uh, and it would be, uh, of course, the obligatory uh, E88s. Um, I'd want to do gold face E88s, and there's a certain spec of them that are the same spec as these wheels, so I'd, ha I'd be able to just swap back and forth without redoing my fitment, which is a huge pain. So there's a certain spec that has like a double step lip and I really love how that looks. It completely changes the look of the 88. Uh, and I haven't seen another car with that spec in person locally. So when I want to just finally pull the trigger on that, I will. Um, then that'll be end game setup, of course. Um, then if I'm super bored one day and I have nothing to do and I really want to do something, it'd be the carbon top as well. Um, 
I used to love the sunroof, but uh, I realized after a few weeks, I never actually open it fully. I just vent it. So um, I like the functional aspect of that. You know, I'm trying to reduce the weight of the car. Uh, I've actually added, you know, weight throughout the car by putting additional mods on that the car didn't have, like the roll bars, et cetera, um, strut bars, et cetera. But uh, yeah, I'd like to remove the weight, the CG, uh, weight from the highest point of CG right here. Um, and that'd be pretty cool. Also just to tie in this dark color with the uh, rear spoiler that's in carbon as well. Um, like I mentioned before, the Recaro Sportster on the passenger side. Um, and then one day if they make a part or if I can find a part that improves the uh, steering response of the car, I'm still interested in, in addressing that as that's why I did the steering wheel, the, the small, I believe, 330 millimeter steering wheel, uh, as well as all the Turner uh, monoball bushings. Uh, it was because I was trying to make the car as instant response, and I wanted to feel like uh, operating a surgeon operating with a scalpel when I turn the wheel like a millimeter, because that's how my Subaru build is now. It's super crazy precise, um, and this car, it's, which is like an E46 problem, it has like a quite a. a, a noticeable range of dead zone in the steering where you know I can kind of just go like this and the car doesn't actually track or, or respond to that at all so it's that that time that I'm doing this in, into a corner it, it's kind of killing that experience because I don't have an immediate response to that so it has been improved with all that I've done um, I think there's still just a little bit of uh, improvement to be made um, I would say then lastly uh, in terms of truly perfecting this car's performance and drivability. Uh, it'd be maybe doing more revisions to my Protune. Um, I'd have to, after I Protuned it with the Sanon, the dyno, uh, with the airbox, it, it, it made a lot of power or noticeable power up top, but uh, down below Vanos level, you know, like 2K, 3K, uh, the car lost a little bit of response and has a hesitation getting on and off throttle. Um, I'm still trying to ascertain that that's normal for an Alpha N setup. Um, I'm told by other people that they don't have that uh, lack of response. So I'm trying to see if I could do, I've already done many street revisions to try to improve that, which it has, but I think to properly do it, uh, I might have to go back on the dyno. Um, and uh, if it came down to it, you know, maybe looking into the, running the CSL DME, uh, which would really resolve that. But right now I've kind of just have adjusted my dr driving to be in the top end more. Uh, and really that's just funner, so yeah, that's right. Alright, so this is gonna be my first ride for like, it's been like two years obviously and he's changed quite a bit, so it's gonna be interesting. Rub. Yeah. Waiting now. Oh, really? Ah, <laughs> oh, my so bad. I, I dialed this in for uh, to have perfectly tight fitment, but I, of course, I was doing that with uh, just you. Weights, yeah. And I guess uh, I don't know. I think it's just like they were lighter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you're just pure muscle mass. So no. That was an insult. <laughs> that was a compliment. Yeah.
So I guess something pretty important to state, I guess now that we've been doing pulls, so people can hear like the gearing, uh, those who know the car would tell that the gearing is very, very short. Uh, it's because I have a 410. I, I'm not sure if I did this. Oh, I guess one of the largest things I've done since the last video was I did a 410 ring and pinion into the differential. So I changed the gearing of the car. And with a 410 diff, this car is a complete beast versus before. It's kind of like if I did a supercharger or a small one, but without actually doing a supercharger. Because the car will basically put bus links on a non 410 E46M now. So that's why it'd be really interesting if you ran out because I have the carbon airbox, the Pro Tune, the exhaust, uh, and then the 410 diff together. That combination is a really potent package and the 410 is just an amazing mod. It's a lot of discussion. People either hate it or love it. To me, this car should have came with it because then it's like a more like a Honda S2000 experience where it's like blah, 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 very tight gearing. Um, I came from my Subarus, so I'm used to shifting quickly and early because that, that car runs out of top end more quickly. So with this car and the super long gears that had stock and the um, and then an 8K plus red line, you know, the gears felt like forever. And now the 410 gave this car the response and the power band that is ideal for it. Alright, so we decided just impromptu to just get some runs in. Um, if I were to guess, I think the E46 will pull a little bit on me because um, he did get it uh, pro-tuned at EAS and it put down 333 and then um, 251. Wheel 331 torque? wheel horse. 300, wheel yeah, yeah, 331 and 251 wheel torque. And my car, Dino 340 wheel and then 258 wheel torque. Um, my car is heavier, but he did put additions like the cage, the roll cage, all the suspension upgrades. Um, so he has certain things that added weight and then also could maybe cr create drag. He was letting me know like the, the splitter in the rear, the rear diffuser, the rear diffuser, my bad. But um, yeah, so it's going to be an interesting, it's going to be an interesting run. My car's completely stock. His is bolt on tuned, obviously, as we just broke down in the earlier parts of this video. So we're probably just going to do a f first gear to third or fourth and then we'll just send off the video there. Car looks good, man. So good. So after the ride in the E46 M3, I have to say it's a lot quicker now. Um, it feels so much more precise. Uh, the shifting is way more aggressive. Um, he was talking about how the gearing's much shorter now and I definitely can feel it because uh, when I was riding with him in the canyons, he was definitely shifting at later points. 
But uh, anyways, yeah, the car accelerates pretty fast. I could definitely feel that I'm pretty sure it's faster than my car. Um, he said it would be a good run, and I agree. Uh, but yeah, after riding in this car, maybe I a little bit second-guessed if I was supposed to get an E90. But um, the reasons why I got the E90 over the E46 was because for a little bit more money, um, you could get a newer car, less miles. Uh, obviously, it has more power. But um, if you're just trying to get a classic and you want a more raw M3, the E46 is definitely the way to go. Um, has less technology. It has less weight. It's just overall more of a, I guess, sports car. It's hard to say because that's definitely debatable, but there's things about it that make it a little bit more raw of a sports car than the E90, but um, I still love the E90. It revs to the moon. Um, I love the sound, the induction noise on the exhaust, but yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed the update on the E46 M3, and just let me know in the comments below which one you'd rather get, an E90 or an E46 M3. But uh, hopefully you liked the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next upload.